Hey guys, welcome to our first big webinar shebang with uh, Live Virtual Help Desk. We've got uh, two guys from LVHD on the phone, Dan Sturgill, who is um, CEO, and Neil Jones, who is the president of the company. So we've got the two top dogs over there on the line with us tonight. Uh, Chris is also here with us. And we're going to basically introduce you to the service, and then we're going to jump right into answering as many of your questions as we possibly can because I know that help desk can be a very confusing subject and you know something that you look at it and it's like well I'm not really sure what I'm gonna get here and we're gonna try to make this as concrete as we possibly can so you can feel very comfortable about what you're gonna get so uh, what you're looking at right now is uh, Neil's screen and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to him and he's gonna just give you a brief overview of the service what you get from it what you know kinda like what their SLAs are how they work through that and then we'll move on to Q&A from there all right so yep. you are up Neil <laughs> okay ready when you are sir okay my name is Neil Jones the president of live virtual health desk I'm here with Dan today um, what I'll do is I'll uh, as you can see these you should see the screen that says help desk services for MSPs if you have any questions as we go through this, please uh, feel free to shout them out or type them into the, uh, the relevant box on your screen and uh, we'll pick them up as we go along. As with most PowerPoints, it's generally fairly uninteresting and I know there'll be more questions than uh, we'll probably have time for, so I'll keep it as short as I can. So we'll kick it off with uh, um, the About Live Virtual Help Desk, of course, and uh, some people may or may not know that we actually started life uh, as an MSP and uh, in brief terms we needed a help desk ourselves. We couldn't find anything anywhere that would do a fixed cost for us and wouldn't do the sort of uh, um, or work effort, uh, wouldn't put the work effort in that we feel that we do. So what we did, we ended up uh, building our own and, uh, and, uh, and started off there around about two years ago or so. So we've assembled, a, a, as it says, a dedicated and very diligent uh, experienced group of people uh, together to, to assemble this help desk. Um, they're extraordinarily skilled people, obviously, as they should be when they're dealing with uh, um, computer services and that sort of thing. But the key point about our uh, technicians, and I mean this with all due respect to technicians, they don't talk to your end customer like a technician. They will give plain and simple English. So rather than baffle everybody with... Uh, uh, with, with science and uh, um, three-letter acronyms and that sort of thing, they'll be able to talk to somebody in a manner uh, which they'll be used to. Um, the, the other point about this is that having an outsourced help desk is basically an extension of your company, and this allows, uh, allows you to focus more on spending your time getting out there, getting more business, selling more um, RMM tool agents, uh, building up your business, going golfing, whatever it is you want to do, all those sort of good things. Because we're an extension of your company, you may or may not say that uh, you, you have an outsourced help desk, but we will answer the uh, telephone as um, uh, simply help desk. This is uh, Steve here, how can I help you, that sort of thing. We won't give away the fact that you know we're, we're actually the help desk called LiveVHD. We will be talking as though we're your actual help desk yourself. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. So this gives you a quick overview of the services and the software support that we have. Um, all the desktop operating systems that are, that are Microsoft-centric, obviously we do them in, in every shade, flavor, color, and everything you can think of. And of course, we do have a good number of clients that use Mac. Um, it's becoming more and more popular these days. I'm sure some of you have come across them more often than not. So uh, we have a great Mac team here as well. All the office uh, stuff that goes on, uh, email clients, of course, the browsers, all the way up to Mozilla. Um, and the, the other key thing I think about us is that the, uh, we are prepared to dig into third-party and proprietary software. Now, it says on, on a best effort basis, but what I will tell you is that uh, if you have something that's a little unusual, then uh, what we can do is if you can give us a top 10 list of uh, general issues with a particular piece of software, our guys will go through that and make every effort to make sure it's fixed before we even think about escalating it. Um, general services, PC and network troubleshooting, of course, 
handheld device configuration and troubleshooting. Of course, Blackberries and iPhones are very popular now, so if somebody cannot sync it with their desktop calendar, that kind of thing. Uh, we'll be happy to help them out with that. Administrative tasks. Um, and we always happy to help uh, with desktop software installations. We'd rather uh, somebody asked us before they gave it a shot themselves and screwed it up royally. And of course, virus and spyware detection and removal. Hey, um, let me interrupt you for just a second. We got a couple of good questions. The one, one of the important ones is just a, a comment: is that apparently you're coming in a little quiet for our guys. Oh, really? um, yeah. So just want to speak up a little bit when you're going through stuff. But um, the uh, the big one was one of our one of our uh, one of the people on the call, Scott, asked if you guys have Google Premier support. Do you do anything with Google applications? Have you worked with any of their stuff? That's a question for Dan. I'll hand that to Dan. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. We have uh, limited expertise on it at this point, but we'll definitely give it uh, a best effort. Um, if it's something that there's a large amount of or, or a more in-depth support that needs to be delivered for that, then we can take it offline and, and include it in our on-ramping. Okay, cool. Um, Let's go ahead and, and move on. I know you guys have a few other questions, but we'll answer them at the end of the presentation, and we'll come. We'll, let's just uh, blow through this. So. <laughs> okay, let's probably kill a couple of the questions out anyway. But uh, the help desk response times. Um, our goal is obviously a minimum of a ninety percent first call resolu resolution on non break fix calls. So that means pretty much nine out of ten calls we can take from uh, inception all the way through to closing a ticket. Um, less than 180 seconds to answer the uh, uh, the actual incoming call, and again on 90% of those calls. Any emails that come in, we uh, guarantee a two-hour response on 90% of all those email requests. They're pretty good SLAs. We aim to beat them every time, um, but uh, as things stand, that's pretty much where we are at this point. One caveat on the 90% first call break fix resolution. If it is a third-party vendor situation, we can't close. If we have successfully opened a ticket with that third-party vendor, we consider that closed by our team and would fall within that 90 percent. Okay, makes sense. Okay, thank you, Dan. Okay, process-wise, uh, um, all the emails that are received by us and all the calls that document documented in your own um, PSA system. So it doesn't matter what PSA system you use. There are generally three big ones out there. You know the names anyway. We will actually parachute into your PSA system and fill out the ticket for your end user. Most people will call in. Our techs will make the ticket up. Our techs will put the ticket into your system. You'll be able to see where we are, uh, whether it's in progress, whether we're waiting on a customer, or whether it's closed or open, whatever the, uh, uh, the issue is with the ticket, you'll be able to see exactly what's going on because it remains in your own PSA system. You don't need to do anything special for us. Um, the only slight wrinkle is that at this point you would need to provide us with a license for ConnectWise. Uh, with Autotask, we have a specific piece of software that allows us to use your Autotask system. Depends on what you use, but we can talk about that later. Every uh, call that's answered is answered by a level two technician. We don't have level one people. Um, I think it's uh, uh, if you've ever called uh, uh, your cable company or, or telco, you'll spend an hour and a half talking to a level one technician about the weather and everything else but the problem you need to get fixed. We don't like to do that to people, so we make sure it's a level two technician that talks to you every time. If uh, Again, if the uh, incoming request can be handled within 10 minutes, the level two technician will see it through to uh, uh, resolution. If not, then we'll uh, also involve a level three uh, technician. But uh, for the most part, a good deal of our tickets are closed on the, a level two technician. Uh, again, escalation policies, depending on where you need that escalation to go and who it needs to go to, uh, will we'll agree upon uh, guidelines for those SLAs as, uh, as we deal with you at, at, at each particular juncture. One other caveat to add to that, uh, all escalations must be approved internally by a level three before going back to a partner company or a third party vendor. So. Thanks, Dan. Okay, pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, everyone can see what this is. It's literally unlimited phone support from eight till six for the, for most general people. I know you guys are doing twenty four seven. So if somebody calls on a Sunday afternoon or three in the morning on a Saturday, somebody will answer that call. So they can call in ten times, a hundred times, a thousand times. It doesn't matter. It's a fixed cost. 
there's no extra uh, cost for having somebody call 10 times, 20 times, or whatever it is. Again, as I've just mentioned, we alert your, you, the MSP, through your own ticketing system so you know what goes on. Um, we're going to take, Dan likes to call it root cause analysis, which of course that's what it is. Uh, we will bury ourselves into the issue. We won't, uh, for the most part, we will make sure we try not to escalate too much back to you. If we escalate something back to you, it means we've exhausted every possible avenue. We pride ourselves on a cradle to grave um, uh, service, so once uh, something comes in, we will beat the living daylights out of it until we can do no more. We've either closed it or we've escalated something because we've had to do that. For example, an ISP is down or a, a machine is so virus out or the uh, hard drive is so, so bad, we cannot do anything. That's the only time we will escalate that to you. I should add, though, when we do escalate to an outside party, and we will, for example, if the ISP is down, we will contact the ISP on behalf of your client. We will detail everything in the ticketing system, and we will follow up with that ISP and your client to make sure that they've been uh, apprised of the situation and they know what's going on. Uh, handheld device and printer configuration. Uh, when we're dealing with a desktop, uh, there's a ton of stuff that's connected to, I think we mentioned Blackberries and iPhones earlier on. We include the printers within that uh, um, tr troubleshooting parameter. So if uh, everyone's connected to a printer somewhere, network or otherwise, if there's an issue there, we'll try and troubleshoot that and sort that out, connectivity issues, uh, user account administration, stuff like that. And as it says there, the last one, triage with third-party vendors, which I think I've slightly covered for you. Okay, the benefits, uh, I think, for most people are obvious. Um, you can use your guys for billable items only. So instead of um, spending a lot of time with your, your end user, and again, I say with with a little tongue-in-cheek here, there is no software anywhere, to my knowledge, and I'm sure anybody else's knowledge, that lets you uh, uh, fix an end user's issue. It's great that you can keep a machine patched, updated, and uh, clean, but uh, there's nothing that uh, will let you uh, um, remove the end user troubles. So you can use your guys to get out there and actually be on site and uh, get yourself more billable hours while we'll, we'll take all the, uh, the front-end calls for you. Again, as a business owner, you'll have more time to work on increasing your business revenue. Instead of spending time checking to see if things have been done, you're going to know it's been done because we've got, uh, got hold of that. Uh, we use your PSA system, as I've mentioned, so you always have the data under your control. We don't expect you to use some other piece of software that we need to use to make sure we get the tickets. We use everything that you use, so it's seamless and uh, easy. Again. Very, very basically, if you need to practice your golf swing or get your handicap down or you just want to spend the day with the family, this is a great way to allow you to take some time time off. I know that uh, having been uh, in the position of an MSP myself at one point, you never get home to see the wife and kids, your wife screaming at you all the time because you're never spending any time, you're forgetting anniversaries and all the other things that go with it. This is something that will help your life immeasurably. So of course, the whole point about live virtual help desk is it is live. So you have a live point of contact for all of your clients. So they will call, they will get a friendly and knowledgeable person on the other end. They will be delighted and they will be your biggest fans once you start doing it. Okay, final points. As I, again, I'm just reiterating stuff like I said, I won't keep too long on this, but uh, plain and simple English, that's what we do. We won't blind them with science. Second level technicians. Again, we won't use first level technicians. It will only annoy your customers further than they already are because they've got an issue. And uh, proprietary software, of course, will make every effort. We will bend over backwards to make you pleased with what we do. So because we use, use your PSA and we will use your RMM tool, we uh, consider that full integra integration into your business so it's uh, all seamless. We're in North America and it's called Canada, the last time I looked, so uh, we speak the same language. I may have a slightly different accent, but uh, you'll be able to understand what all of our technicians say. That's us, so we're happy to be partnered with Virtual Administrator, and I will now hand it over to any questions.